Hey guys, it is Mike with the Come Tonight. Welcome back to another Song Suggestion Friday. I got this little guy here for all of you guys giving me shit about ice in my whiskey. Go fuck yourself. This is the show where you guys leave suggestions in the comment section of songs that you would like my feedback on. I go through those. I throw them in a poll on Patreon. If you would like to take part in that Patreon poll, you can go to the link in the description, pledge $5 or more a month, and you can have access. The patrons vote on them. I take the top ones. I give them a listen, and I give you my feedback. I grade them on a plus, equals, or minus sign, whether or not I would actively or actively avoid seeking that song out again. That that kind of made sense. Let's get started. Come On Eileen by Dexy's Midnight Runners. They have a nice callback to an, a classic Irish air in the beginning. Then after that, they do a great intro where they establish the beat and really establish that this is going to be the meat of the song. And a pop song where there's about 30 seconds in is our first modulation to a new key. I'm like, hell yeah. That modulation kind of adds to the established energy we already have in the song. I never noticed before that there was a banjo back there in the background, but it adds a nice crisp chunk to the the track and helps kind of bring out the brightness a little more. I know this is an early 80s song, but it always feels like a 70s song to me and is also a guilty pleasure of mine. Now the focus of this song is on the beat, but they have some excellent melodic lines in this song. Some of my favorite actually. And they have some really nice touches with the harmonies, especially at the Tura Lura Lay part where it kind of escalates up and is like, ah, oh, it feels so good. I love it. And then they modulate yet again when they get to the chorus. I don't know any pop song that modulates twice on the regularly. And they also have a change in feel at the chorus too. And I'm not sure if it's the change in feel or that they actually just very slightly sped up the tempo, but you can definitely feel a little bit of a rush there. And it's kind of cool. The vocal style kind of seems like it would have been an influence for Modest Mouse. It's also a similar vocal style to the Proclaimers. I mean, I know they come from similar origins anyway. And then the accelerando in the bridge is super fucking cool too. Total grade for this song, plus sign. Child in Time by Deep Purple. I really, really, really like the tone of that organ. I also really like the change in feel at about a minute 56. However, I am not a fan of the way that they captured the audio of the drums. Uh, first of all, it sounds really roomy and really dated, but secondly, you can also hear a little bit of distortion coming through. The falsetto in this song, and it starts around three minutes, is awesome. I mean, it's some of my favorite parts of the song, actually. The composition of this song kind of feels Maiden-esque, like this would have been an influence on their comp style. And as is pretty usual, you got like a three-minute Richie Blackmore solo, but it's awesome. It's very tasty. I kind of wish this song would have ended after 606, when they had that epic organ and uh, guitar harmony part. But I will say the ending crescendo is kind of awesome, too. I guess my real thing was I, just, I didn't need to go through that quiet part again. Altogether, a very cool journey, though. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Ace of Spades by Motorhead. This is the embodiment of grit. The whole recording is somehow very live and roomy, but still also feels cr clear and crisp. To be honest, this song is kind of compositionally boring. The only variety really comes from the drum parts where he switches it up a bit, which I actually do like. The guitar solo is cool, but it's also just kind of meh. I don't really care for Lemmy's voice, to be honest with you, but I mean, it is very appropriate for what they're going for. Now, this doesn't have the traditional heaviness of like modern metal today, but this song absolutely has a large dose of adrenaline. It'll get you amped. Not much else to say. This song is pretty short and there's not a whole lot going on. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Closer by Nine Inch Nails. It's an obnoxiously long kick snare intro. They could have easily cut that in half. The line of the song where he says, help me, those harmonies kind of remind me of the Blurred Lines harmonies by uh, Robin Thicke. Really not feeling these lyrics. And to be honest, the samples kind of sound like he got them from Windows Media Player. The arrangement is stronger in some parts than others. In the beginning, it kind of felt bland and blah, but as the song built along, it got better. The melody is pretty good, even though I know it's not the focus of the song, and the syncopation around 346, I really liked that when that sample came in. Kind of hangs there for a while and lets you chill on that vibe, and I think that was a good choice. And it kind of made me think, this whole song kind of feels like it's more of a background music track than it is a standalone listen to it and pay attention to it track. The sample at 449 was obnoxious and annoying and instantly took me out of the song. I wanted to turn it off at that point. Positive about this song, the production and sound palette was really good. It was full across the spectrum, but it kind of 
ebbed and flowed and gave it breath across the uh, across the frequency spectrum. And I also did like the ending. I thought the ending was appropriate. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Stargazer by Rainbow. Yet another Richie Blackmore song. This is solid, classic arena rock. And you really don't see a whole lot of Phrygian mode in this genre and definitely not in this era. So it was cool that they used that to write. The vocals at parts are similar to Robert Plant, but I actually like these a lot better. All in all, that vocal performance was killer. And again, this song is feeling like an Iron Maiden-esque type of composition. I, I would not be shocked if Richie Gilmore, Richie Gilmore, wow, Richie Blackmore was a huge influence on Iron Maiden. There was a really cool Phrygian solo by Richie Blackmore, although it kind of got a little overindulgent, but it wasn't completely off-putting. Now, I was kind of thinking maybe the song was going to be too long, but they kind of hung on the chorus feel at the end for a while and just let that build and let the tension rise. And by the end of it, I was like, okay, this is cool. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Crawling by Linkin Park. This is the first Linkin Park song I ever listened to. It was like back in middle school. This song is epic. There's not a whole lot going on here, but it's the perfect example of simple but extremely effective. Besides the vocals and the intro sample, my favorite part of this song is the bass. The tone that they chose for the bass was perfect, and also the bass line itself was awesome. Like, it really, really makes the song. The tension that's built going from the pre-chorus to the chorus is perfect. And that new emotion that you get out of the vocals in the chorus is so powerful. There really isn't much to this song, like I said. I mean, it's just good the way it is. And I realized after listening to it this time and thinking about it more critically, it has almost verbatim the same song structure as Numb. Like, Numb is like a clone of this song. Total grade for this song, plus sign. Kingdom of Heaven, part two, because the person did not specify, and I'm not listening to more than one 10 minute freaking song for a suggestion. By Epica. Really liked the guitar and throat singing intro. Uh, kind of gave me a little chills on the back of my neck. Then it kind of goes into a string part that was very beautiful. It had great samples. It sounded almost real. And then goes into this kick-ass metal part. And the guitar part was awesome because it, it could have easily just sat there and chugged along. But it, it did some of that. It was kind of riffy, but it was also interesting because they did other melodic lines in between. Very cool. All around the the composition, the arrangement, which I loved, and the production and the, uh, the the choices for sound was awesome. I mean, they earned the name Epica. I absolutely loved the vocals. Uh, she sings like she's wife material. The composition and arrangement is definitely more on the symphonic side than the prog side, but it's very fulfilling. The kick tone is awesome, and just the drum mix in general is killer. I have a feeling if I tried to listen to a lot more of this band, I would most likely be disappointed because I just have a feeling they're probably a one-trick pony type of thing. I don't know for sure, but typically symphonic metal bands don't stray from doing symphony-type epic shit, you know? And that can... It, everything can start to sound the same after a while. And I really like this song, so I don't want to ruin that. The guitar solo is basically a slightly more neoclassical John Petrucci. You could hear the Petrucci influence, but there was a little bit more neoclassical lines going on. I thoroughly enjoyed this song. They could have easily overindulged in themselves, but everything was very appropriate. Total grade for this song, plus sign. The Muse by Zac Brown Band. Really, really like that intro line where everything's kind of in unison hitting this melodic line. Very cool. Has a very big sound in the vein of folk or classic country. I actually also very much dig the vocals. They, they feel real, feel genuine. And the actual composition itself is relatively simple, but it's given life through the arrangement and where they choose to place different instruments at what times. That bass sounds great, it's nice and deep, and does the cool walk at some parts. This isn't really country country, it's more country folk, kind of, with some rock in there, and this is the type of stuff that I can tolerate because it feels like it comes from a genuine place and it's interesting. Hell, might even be able to enjoy it. You can barely hear the Hammond organ, there's like one part where everything else drops out that you can hear it, even though it actually is through the entire song, but I thought that was a nice touch. This is really not my style of music, but there's absolutely merit here, and there is nothing in this song that I found annoying at all. Total grade for this song, equal sign. White Pearl Black Oceans by Sonata Artica. Just like Epica, these guys are trying to go for a similar sound, though I will say it kind of falls a little flat. 
The production is solid and clear, the vocals are great, but the melody could be improved at some parts. I feel like somewhere in this mix or master, they lost some high end, and I think that might be because all of those parts that have more high range were brought down in the act on the faders. I do definitely dig the gallop part at 314 more than other parts of the song, though. Brings it more energy. As I said, I think they were trying to go for what Epica went for, but I think one thing that helped Epica was Age. That was a much newer album than this one that I listened to by Sonata Arctica. And also, they try to venture to a bunch of different places, but they all kind of feel disparate instead of being one cohesive unit. Just kind of makes the song drag a little and just doesn't quite get me there. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Elysium by Stradivarius. That intro guitar was absolutely gorgeous. You eat that shit up all day. And they have a cool pedal tone guitar line going on after that part that I really liked. And the bass was oddly fuzzy. That whole beginning part just kind of reminds me of like an 80s action movie. The guitars really need to be brought higher up in that mix. It's making the thing sound hollow. I mean, it's an essential part of what that sound should be and it's missing. The pinch harmonics at 220 and throughout the song are fucking awesome. Now the production was similar to Sonata Artica, but the arrangement and the composition are giving this song more life. The guitar solo at 310 and again throughout the song was fucking tasty, really, really good. The guy plays a really mean guitar, why not bring him more present in the mix? And then that key sampled following that guitar solo at 310 comes in at about 336. Loved, loved that tone. There was a whole lot of key solos and guitar solos in this that were all really awesome. It's a fucking 18 minute song. Sorry, not gonna run through all of them. The vocals are good, but the sometimes his vibrato I think is a little much. Honestly, they probably should have split this song into three tracks. There's a lot going on here. They all feel connected, but I mean, you don't need an 18 minute song. I know Dream Theater has done this before where they've had obnoxiously long songs like Octavarium, but Octavarium felt like one fucking idea, with the exception of that obnoxious intro. Stradivarius as a band in general is very hit or miss for me. This song was definitely a hit. Total grade for this song, plus sign. New York, New York by Frank Sinatra. There's not a whole lot to say about Frankie that hasn't already been said. I, I'm a sucker for big band music. I'm a sucker for the old crooners, and he is arguably the best. Absolutely got to love the feeling that he puts into it. The song is about loving the city and, and embodies the go and get it spirit, ambition. This is a pretty typical big band style song, but with starts and stops and retardendos and crescendos that really make the grand the grandeur that is the song of being in the big city. And along with how Frankie styles his voice, it just makes the song huge. This is one of the greats. If you haven't listened to it, go listen to it, please. Total grade for this song. Uh, I don't know. I don't have really have to grade it. No matter what I grade, it's not going to be worthy anyway. I have one suggestion for you this week. Marble Zone, as done by Smooth McGroove. I really didn't play a whole lot of Sonic games growing up. I was a Nintendo kid. But Smooth McGroove did a acapella rendition of Marble Zone from one of the Sonic games. And I think it sounds about a billion times better than the original. The original kind of sounds fucking lame, to be honest with you, and the way he did it made it sound so much cooler. That is it for Song Suggestion Friday. If you would like, please leave a suggestion in the comments section. One suggestion. If you'd like to take part in the Patreon poll or just support me in general and support the channel, you can go to my link in the description. Head on over to Patreon, pledge $5 or more a month, and you can take part in that poll. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Become the Night, or if you don't want to do a rolling pledge, you can go to the link in the description to my merch store and get some cool merch. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!